The Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, rated by independent research the most popular West Coast program. In gasoline, you know, it takes extra quality to go farther. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal circle sign in yellow and black that identifies Signal service stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story, The Blue Legend. In most cases that lead to murder, the original impulse is a basic part of a man's character, a hidden ingredient in his makeup that may take years to find its way to the surface. And George Canto was no exception. For months, Canto had been a hanger-on around around Juno, a Natalie-dressed man with a vague background and enough book knowledge of mineralogy to get him by. But even though Canto himself didn't realize it, murder was already there. And it began to come to the surface that day he looked up Big Mike Brennan in his polished pine domain on the hill in back of town. Oh, now, wait a minute, Canto. What are you trying to hand me? Only the biggest thing you ever got a whiff of, that's all, Mike. (laughs) You know, I like you, Canto. You've got your dreams. Only when you've been around this country as long as I have, you won't fall for every rumor that comes along. Okay, sir, you're a big operator and smart. But I tell you, I've hit, and hit good. I got this from the assayer an hour ago. Take a look. You're really serious about this, aren't you? Read the little figures on the paper and find out why. Well? The sample was out of the seam you found? Certainly. You think I'd try salting on you? I don't know. I got a lot of land around here, and I've never seen anything run this high. 15,000 to the ton ain't bad digging. Just exactly why did you bring this to me, Canto? I'm broke. You've got capital and equipment and uh, know-how. I've got nowhere. What's the deal? 50-50, partnership. We pool all our holdings, split even. It'll pay out for you inside of six months. You just told me you were broke. I also just showed you the assay. Where is the strike? Uh Uh-uh, not till it's a deal. You own the land? Make an agreement with me and I guarantee I'll get it. You know, Canto... I'm just sucker enough to go for this deal. (laughs) You haven't done badly, Mike. This isn't exactly a shack you've got here. Do I uh, draw up some papers? No, papers can come later. My handshake's good enough around here. Okay, partner. We're partners. Yeah. Now, where's our strike located? You got a map of the Blue Lake area? Yeah, sure. Here it is. Now, pull the light over. Yep. Now, you see this range here, left of Blue Lake? Yeah, yeah. The seams, right? There. There. Uh-huh. Can't, are you? That's the Blue Legend. That's my property. Uh-uh. Our property, partner. Remember? Well, I'll be... Uh... <laughs> 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 okay, Canto. Where do we go from here? There's no doubt about it. Murder was there right from that first meeting with Big Mike. But you didn't know it, Canto. Not yet. You were too concerned with whether Mike would really stand still for the shrewd deal you'd put across. And even when he finally broke out into a big hearty laugh at his own expense, you wondered if you'd really won. 
And later that evening, when Big Mike's wife, Helen, came downstairs to see you, another idea began to run around in your brain. As she walked into the room, you suddenly realized that she was more beautiful than you'd thought, even though she was angry at you, Kanto. Kanto, what is this? What are you trying to do to Big Mike? What do you mean, Helen? We just made a business deal. You know I had Mike almost talked into giving up mining. He's sick, Kanto. He goes crazy when he gets started. His heart can't stand it. Oh, now, Helen, he's not going to have to work that hard. It's not a matter of work. Right now, he's upstairs getting his clothes ready. He's already called Gartland to have the supply plane ready to leave in the morning. Well, sure. We'll have to go up and get more samples, see what machinery we'll need. The doctor says he shouldn't fly. The altitude. Ah, little flying won't hurt Mike. Big guy like that. Besides, he's risked more than his neck for a strike like this. A strike. There's always a strike. That's all I've heard of it since I came here. I'm sick of it. Don't you see, Kendall? It's not good for Mike. You're showing a lot of concern for the big guy's health. What do you mean by that? Let's not kid ourselves, Helen. I've watched you since I've been here in Juneau. I've been uh, interested. You don't love Big Mike. You never have. You married him because you thought you saw a good thing. Is that the lowest thing you could think of to say to me? Truth hurts, huh? All right. So it hurts. I did marry Mike because it looked like a good thing. I was tired of being kicked around. But I've come to realize what a great guy he is. But you don't love him. Oh, I've wanted to. I've tried. But you don't love him. He doesn't know that. He isn't going to know it. If I could get out now without hurting him. If I could leave and never come back. But I won't hurt him. And I won't have you hurt him either. Mike's a big boy now, Helen. He makes his own decisions. Well, everything's all packed. We'll be able to get off before... Hey, what's the matter with you two? Uh, nothing, Mike. We were uh, just talking about the Blue Legend. Telling her how you got me for a partner, eh, Kendall? <laughs> Come on, buck up, you two. There's nothing so tragic about ore running 15,000 to the ton, right? Right, Mike. <laughs> That's settled, then. I think this calls for a toast. Mike, you know what Dr. Lawrence said about your drinking? Oh, this is an occasion, Helen. A little drink can't hurt me once in a while. Yeah, Kendall? Uh, no thanks, Mike. Oh, you don't drink here. Uh... Here you are, Helen. Now, don't you worry about me. I can take care of myself. After all, Mike... Well, we're I... just going to make a fast round trip up tomorrow morning, back in a day or two. Now, here's to the Blue Legend. Well, Helen, won't you drink to it? Of course, Mike. To the Blue Legend. <laughs> Yes, Canto. From the beginning, murder was hidden there, just behind your shrewd, friendly smile. But as you stood there watching Helen lift her glass toward Mike, you realized with a start that it had broken through to the surface. The idea, Canto, that was running through your brain. Helen, she is beautiful, isn't she? And the blue legend, it is fabulous. And all that really stands in your way is Big Mike Brennan. And you're still thinking of that the following morning as the supply plane taking you and Mike to Blue Lake lets down over the flat, grassy meadow. Gartland, the pilot, skillfully guides it through an avenue of tall hemlock and spruce. The wheels touch, and the plane comes to a stop. <sighs> well, looks like we made it. Well, you are nervous, are you, Gart? I, uh, I'm always nervous sitting down in a potato patch like this. <sighs> Come on, Mike, last stop. Hey, <laughs> look at that, will you? <laughs> Sleep must have dozed off on the way. Hey, Mike, wake up. Hey, wait a minute, Gart. Hey, what's the matter with him? He's not asleep. He passed out. Uh-oh, his heart, the altitude. Well, that drink he took just before we left. Cut his collar open, I'll rub his hands. <laughs> Better get wise. Doc Lawrence told him to lay off. Mike, Mike, come on, Mike. Hey, he's coming around. I better take him back to town right now. No, not on top of this. He can't tackle that hump again until he's had a chance to rest up. Mike, come on, big boy. You know, Kanto, someday this guy's going to wake up dead. Huh? I said one of these days this bird's going to wake up dead. Yeah. Yeah, Gartland. I'm afraid you may be right. With the prologue of Blue Legend, the Signal Oil Company brings you another strange story by The Whistler. 
But now a question. What would you think of a driver who deliberately did something that clogged up his motor with six times as much carbon and wore out his cylinders 50% faster than necessary? Well, get ready for a shock, because that's just what you're doing if you're still using old-fashioned straight motor oil. Listen to these facts. In exhaustive road and laboratory tests, today's finest straight motor oil was compared with the amazing new type signal lubricant that combines 100% pure paraffin base with five scientific new compounds, Signal Premium Motor Oil. The result? The motors using Signal Premium Oil actually showed only one-sixth as much carbon and one-third less cylinder wear. Now, get that. Motors stayed six times cleaner. Cylinder wear was reduced one-third with new Signal Premium Motor Oil. And that holds just as true for old cars as for shining new ones good reason, I'd say, for making your next oil change a change to the new type signal lubricant that's your guarantee of a sweeter running motor. Signal premium motor oil. And now, back to the whistler. Murder. The idea that was in the back of your brain. And right out in the open, too, where you can look at it and recognize it for what it is. You're going to murder Mike Brennan. And suddenly you know, too, that it was there all the time. There the day you tricked Mike Brennan into a partnership, giving you half of the blue legend. There the night you argued with Mike's wife, Helen, and found her more beautiful than you'd ever realized. And most of all... It was there when the supply plane let down at Blue Lake, and you found that Mike's heart condition was worse than anyone but Helen had admitted. Yes, it was all there. Motive, a ready-made explanation of the death, and you know how to get the perfect opportunity, don't you, Canto? Ah, there you are, Mike. Huh? Feeling any better this afternoon? Oh, I'm fine, Canto. That wasn't anything at all this morning. Forget about it. Just like that, huh? It's not that easy, Mike. Look, will you stop trying to take care of me the way Helen does all the time? Okay, but you gave me quite a scare in that I place. said forget it, Canto. Got some samples? I got a little assay set. We might make a preliminary, then we can... Now, now, wait this... a minute, Mike. I uh, sort of had the idea it might be better for you to stay up here for a few days before tackling that return trip. Huh? Better rest up a little, Mike. Rest up? What for? Do you good. Besides, you've been saying you wanted to stay up here longer. Sure, but you know how Helen feels about that. Well, uh, supposing I go in with the samples tomorrow morning, and I'll just telephone Helen and tell her you had a narrow squeeze. Uh -huh, and... No, don't tell her that. She'll dream up all sorts of things. She worries about me. Ah, maybe you're right. Well, uh, I'll just say that you're getting a kick out of it. Uh, you are, aren't you? You know I am. I miss this kind of thing. Then it's settled. I'll handle Helen for you. You're okay, Chando. Thanks. Well, got to take care of my partner, don't I? Did you, uh, did you take a look at Mike? Yeah, guard. He's sleeping like a baby. I'm kind of worried, Cato. Well, I don't know, Oh, he's but... okay. Forget it. Well, he's not himself. Didn't touch his dinner. I, I don't think we ought to leave him up here alone. You heard what he said. He wants it that way. There's something else. That bourbon. Bourbon? I unpacked his stuff for him. There's a full bottle in his suitcase. He won't touch it. No, you don't know him. He'll putter around the claim tomorrow until he's got a good chill. Take one look at that bottle on the shelf. Oh, skip it, guard. Mike's over 21. You'll just make him sore if you do anything. Come on. Let's hit the sack. They're taking off at five. An hour later, you're both in bed. And you lie there quietly waiting for Gart to fall asleep. You're glad he didn't make an issue of the bottle of bourbon. Because it's suddenly become very important to you, hasn't it, Candace? Yes. You know Michael will want a drink to warm himself tomorrow when he comes in from working the claim. You're counting on it, aren't you, Canto? The assay fluid. It's deadly poison. You're thinking that a man couldn't live very long with some of that inside of him. 
Mike couldn't live very long, could he, Canto? It's one o'clock when you finally decide Gart is asleep. Quietly, you get out of bed, walk to the cabinet over the sink. Ah, the bourbon bottle is still there. You pour a little down the sink. And then reach down in the space under the basin for the bottle of assay fluid. <gasps> Fill the bourbon bottle back up to the full mark. And then carefully put them both back in their place. You return to bed now. Knowing that when Mike Brennan pours a drink out of that bottle tomorrow, he'll be dead in a matter of minutes. There's no sleep after that, of course. Just a kind of weary stupor, full of visions, of planned answers to the questions that might come, of tossing and turning, of thinking of what it will be like to own the blue legend. Ghetto! Of what it will be like to have Helen Brennan turning to you for sympathy. Ghetto! And then... Ghetto, Ghetto, wake up! Huh? Ghetto! Uh, uh, what's the matter? It's five o'clock. Let's get rolling. Oh... Where's Mike? Hey, he's still asleep. Now, take it easy. We'll slip out without waking him. I'll fly you to Juno, pick up the supplies, and be back here tonight. Let him sleep. He really needs a rest. Yeah, you're right, Cart. Mike needs a rest. A long rest. Yes, Canto, it's only a matter of time now until the Blue Legend and Helen Brennan are yours. Mike will have a long rest. You've seen to that. There's a strange feeling of satisfaction inside of you. Of exultation over a victory that's all but won. It's not quite seven o'clock when Gartland sets the little supply plane down at the Juno Airport and you hurry to a phone booth to call Helen. Hello? Hello, Helen, this is Canto. Oh, well, that's why I called, Helen. The Gartman flew me down. He's flying back tonight. We thought it would be better for Mike to stay up there and rest. What do you mean? Is something the matter? Well, uh, Mike didn't want me to say anything to Tell you, Tell me, but... Cato. Well, it's nothing serious, Helen. Really, it isn't. Mike had a slight attack. It must have been the altitude. I knew it. I knew he shouldn't have gone up there. Now, take it easy, Helen. He'll be all right. Told me to give you his love. Look, uh, let me come over and talk to you. What about, Cato? I've made a decision, Helen. About Mike working. I, I think you were right. May I come over? I'll be waiting. You hang up the receiver, stand in the phone booth thinking for a minute, running over in your mind the things you're going to say to Helen, things that will make her trust you, turn to you when she learns that Mike is gone. This is the hardest part of all, isn't it, Canto? To stand in front of Helen saying things you don't mean. I'm really worried about him, Helen. He, he just passed out. I tried to tell you. And I didn't listen. I was wrong, Helen, dead wrong. Mike had no business taking that trip. He is a sick man. I've been so worried about him. Helen, I promise you it won't happen again. Now, look, when Mike comes back from Blue Lake, I'll ask him to stay here while I run things up there. Would you, Kanto? Would you? Well, he won't like it, but you just leave it to me. I'll make him stay here. Then there won't ever be any more dates. <laughs> oh, Kanto, I'm so glad. And, uh, Helen. Yes, Cano. The way I talked to you that day, the things I said, I, I want you to know that I'm... I, I'm sorry. Are you, Cano? Yes, Helen. I, I want you to know you can count on me as your friend. Your closest friend. I, I don't know what to say. Just tell me that you trust me, Helen. I... I trust you, Cano. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. And that's all there is to it, Canto. You were so convincing you almost believed it yourself. There's nothing to do now but wait. At nine o'clock the next morning, you settle into an easy chair in the lobby of your hotel with a newspaper. Sure now that it must be all over. A minute later, you look up. Gartland is standing over you. What are you doing here, Gartland? Canto, I... I got bad news. You don't mean Mike? Yeah, Mike. Another attack? Worse than that, Canto. He's dead. Dead? Good Lord. 
I, uh, I found him up at the cabin when I flew in the supplies last night. He was dead when I got there. Flew the body down just now. Why, I, I can't believe it. Why, only yesterday. I know. His wife was right all the time. That trip was too much for him. You're sure it was his heart? What else? Oh, poor Helen. Somebody's going to have to break the news to her. That, that isn't going to be an easy job. Don't worry, we won't have to. Huh? The coroner saved us the trouble. The coroner? Oh, what do you mean, coroner? He called Mrs. Brennan an hour ago. It seems there's going to be an inquest. Is that all? Not quite. They wanted her permission for an autopsy. Autopsy? What for? Everybody knows Mike had a bad heart. I'm sure Helen had never allowed him to... She, uh, already has. That bottle of bourbon, Canto. Sitting up in the cabinet over the sink where you left it night before last. With its lethal dose of assay fluid ready to testify against you. You can see it now, can't you? Exhibit A in the case of the government versus George Canto. The charge... Murder. An autopsy. Over a thousand heart failures every year, and they had to land on this one with an autopsy. There's only one way now. You've got to get to that poison bottle of bourbon before they do. Wait a minute, Gotland. Where's the plane? Oh, the airport, of course. What's that got to do with it? We, uh, we've got to go up there. Up where? The, the cabin. What are you talking about? Well, the, 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 the claim papers, they're, they're all there. We'll have to have them right away. If you're talking about Mike's baggage, I brought it back with the body. Oh, no, no, no. It has nothing to do with the baggage. These papers, uh, M Mike was keeping them. They, they shouldn't get out of our hands. Look, Canto, if you're trying to tell me to get in that thing and fly back up there after last night... That's I... exactly what I am telling you. I'll get into some heavy clothes and meet you at the airport in 15 minutes. Almost Blue Lake, huh? Eh? Yeah. Look, Guard, I'm sorry I blew up before. You know, Mike's death and everything. Oh, sure, I know. He was a great guy, Cantle. Oh, you don't have to tell me that. Stubborn as a mule. Wouldn't listen to anyone. You know, Cantle, this will probably surprise you. I heard Doc Lawrence tell Mike once that if he ever took another drink, it'd kill him. But did that bother Mike? Nah. You, uh, think that had anything to do with it? Oh, uh, th that's what I started to tell you back at the airport. Helen had the coroner's report when I called. The report? You mean the autopsy's been held already? Yeah, early this morning. It seems there was, uh, some question about that, that liquor business. Well, you know how Mike was. What do you mean? Well, they thought it, it might have something to do with his death. One drink too many or something. Of course, that wasn't it at all. It was partly that attack he had here in the plane with you us. You mean it... The autopsy showed it, it was his heart. Well, it shouldn't be any surprise to you, Cantle. But here's the thing that surprised me. Yeah? What's that? The time of death. You know, that morning we left, Mike was already dead. He never left his bunk. Never left his... But then he couldn't have drunk... Then it wasn't the liquor. No. Hey, wait a minute. Let me put this crate on the ground. These days, I'm going back in the Army and get me a job at a nice big airfield where... Hey, Connor, hang on. Brakes jammed. We're going to ground loop. Look out. When you open your eyes, Canto, there's a throbbing pain in your head. A sick feeling in your stomach, and the roof seems to be whirling. Whirling. Oh. Everything's hazy, tumbling around in your head. You've got to do something. Oh. You've got to do something very important. Well, what is it? I... I've got to. I've got to. The room clears a little. And slowly, as if from a long way off, it appears. The bourbon. Uh, the bottle of bourbon. That's what you were trying to remember. Yes. Yes. I've got to. There's a terrible ringing in your ears as you try to lift yourself off the cot. That sickening feeling in your stomach comes back again. And then suddenly you remember... It doesn't matter. Yes. Mike died a natural death. The autopsy showed that. It comes back to you now. The poison bottle of bourbon isn't so important anymore. So you fall back on the pillow and then... <sighs> well, you feeling better now, Cato? Huh? Oh, the Cartman. Where... 
I, I didn't see you. <laughs> I know. I've been sitting here waiting for you to come around. Hey, you've been out but good. I... It... Hey, you better take it easy. You've been muttering like that for five minutes. Well, muttering? What did I say? Well, nothing I could understand. Hey, you sure you're okay now? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure, Gartland. Everything's okay now. The Whistler will return in just a moment with a strange ending to tonight's story. Meantime, let me ask you drivers something. In gasoline, which do you think is more important, mileage or quality? Well, don't bother to answer that one, because the plain fact of the matter is, in gasoline, it takes extra quality to go farther. That's why we're so proud of the fact that Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. You see, you get those quick signal starts, that fast signal pickup and smooth knock-free signal power, because Signal helps your engine run more efficiently. And naturally, the more efficiently your motor runs, the more mileage you get. That's why Signal says your speedometer is the best yardstick of gasoline quality. Check yours, and you'll find it's true. In gasoline, it does take extra quality to go farther. And, of course, Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. And now, back to the whistler. So you're in the clear at last, aren't you, Kanto? The coroner's report indicates Mike Brennan died of heart failure at the Blue Legend Mine on the night that you decided to kill him. Yes, Canto, you can relax now. It'll be easy to pour the poison bottle of bourbon down the drain. It's all yours at last. The Blue Legend with its rich storehouse of wealth. And Helen, she's free now, Canto, to leave Alaska as she always wanted. But you feel somehow that when she leaves, you'll be by her side. Gartland, the pilot, is sitting at the foot of the bed watching you carefully. That was a close call, Kento. When that brig jammed, I thought we were done for. Lucky we didn't crack into the trees. What, what happened? Oh, uh, you, you cracked your head on the instrument panel. Oh, I, I feel awful weak. <laughs> You'll be okay. It isn't just my head. My stomach. Oh. Well, you, you were out for quite a while, you know. Probably still dizzy. Had me worried for a minute, Cano, but I finally found a way to bring you around. What? What did you do? Do? I just gave you a couple of healthy shots of that bourbon of Mike's. That's all. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Monday at 9. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you to get the most driving pleasure, drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. <laughs> Featured in tonight's story were Alan Reed and Virginia Gregg. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen with story by E. Jack Newman, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>